junkies. So I'm gonna start to start to set the stage, but she has a she even has a list of a whole bunch of Asian American uh, actors and uh, actors that have been ascendant over the course of the years. Because like she brought up to me when we were talking about this topic. How in 1993, we had the Joy Luck Club, which was kind of like the first big Asian-American led Hollywood film that we had. Mm-hmm. And the between, oh, oh, that was that was it's not the power is your time. That was that was actually a wrong button. That shit. Wrong button. That shit. She, 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 uh, she did it again. Oh, she, she did it again. All right. There we go. All right. And if you do it together, so, then so, right. She's getting ready. She's getting ready to come over anyway. So the Joy Luck Club happened in 1993. And there was a long time between that movie for the next Asian-led Hollywood movie. It was 93? Yeah, it was 1993. Joel Luck came out. Yeah, so right? Street, so Street Fighter came out a year later. Right, with Ming-Na Wen. Right, yeah. exactly. Interesting. Yeah, it was a long, 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 long time ago. And then in the 2000s, kind of like we... In the bridge between then, in the 2000s, or even in the late late 90s into the 2000s, <laughs> The only Asian-led films we got were all from imported Asian stars. Shaolin Fat, Jackie, uh, Jackie Chan, um, Jet, Jet Li. Lee. Um, so there weren't any homegrown American stars that were leading the way in Hollywood. And that trend has now seemed to reverse. I was just bringing up the other day, uh, or I, ju- I was just thinking about this in preparation for the show. What happened to Shaolin Fat? Like, he yeah, disappeared. what happened to him? Right, he's not doing any movies at all. That like, not even a Hong Kong films. Really? Well, he he did that Dragon Ball movie. Uh, we don't talk about that. Uh-uh. 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 We don't talk no, about no, that uh-uh. anymore. He, he probably stopped. Talk about he that. probably stopped doing American uh, projects after that. He was like, nope. That's <laughs> it, right? Like, like that soured him on on the Hollywood on the Hollywood experience. Which it wasn't his fault. That I mean, his Master Roshi actually was one of the only other kind of halfway decent parts about the film mm. if you can find something decent about the film right. outside of uh jamie chung's chi chi because mm-hmm. she was literally the only thing i even cared about in, oh, in yeah. the film is this scene okay i can't okay so we got two scenes here one of them is uh with uh i couldn't switch the thing that's fine that's the, fine, the, that's fine. You, you, you did the best you could under pressure which one Just this one. one right there that, that one what you got and switching between those two okay. well what you got is fine um, we so we need her to come over, and she's going to talk a little bit about what happened to the other. What other? There was one with like Amarok, real big, which is fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's she's got that. She's going to switch between the two. All right. Uh, anyway, anyway, so she's giving. Is your mic unmuted? By the way. No, I got it. I got oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so. The Fallen Marvel says Jamie was terrible too. Shh. Shh. Yeah. This is coming from this coming, coming from a man who got through eight Fast and Furious movies, but suddenly the ninth one was too ridiculous. <laughs> right. Touche. Can't, can't Touche. Tr- can't trust any judgment from that. Right. Touche. Anyway, um, but no, um, Asian films. I, I wanted her to talk about uh, how Asian films uh, and what this means to her having something like Shang Chi kind of be a hit in America. Um, and kind of like, notes, man. <laughs> I mean, look at her. She's coming all prepared. She's I got, legit took she's notes. got, she got handwritten notes and I everything. I legit took notes. Ser- yeah, seriously. She, yeah, so, she did. Um, as uh, an American of Asian descent. Well, you uh, want, you might, okay. Okay. As a, okay. This is, this is weird. I'm actually in front of the camera. Put your right. On. I wasn't prepared for this. Put your headphones on. Put your headphones on. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. I mean, oh, like, snap, if you don't be part this. of the show, do be, be fully part of the show. Oh, snap. Okay. Here. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, t- King to Kim's leather. Get the power, get the power family out of here. All right. All right. That. Okay. I hope y'all can hear me. Stop it. <laughs> go, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. So, um. Switch camera to you. Okay. You want to switch camera to me? Yeah, switch camera to you. So, right so you can see your face. All right, guys. Hi. Hello. Okay. I'm a Dobo girl. She's um, really not that red. I, I promise you. Oh, uh, well. We didn't have time. To, 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 yeah, I should, I was, this really was kind of unexpected. Red. We were talking pre-show. Yeah. And the idea of me coming on camera talking about Asia America. Because uh, I was telling Ken, like, dude, this and this and this and this. And he's like, well, why don't you say it? I'm like. Exactly. Okay. Like, I want to uh, speak I'll for say. you. So, just, no makeup. Up. Not ready, you know. I'm. I'm. It's okay. Oh, it's I'm sorry. Okay. Did I put you on the spot? It's like, fine. That's, okay. It's fine. Right. It's fine. I'm. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy yeah, to awesome. be here. So, uh, okay. Disclosure. I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm the opposite of a gatekeeper. I am a proud casual. When I say proud casual, maybe there's a game that I'll really di- deep uh, deep dive into, such as uh, Ingress or uh, DDR. Yes, Dance Dance Revolution. But other than that, I'm just. 
I'm just like, eh, whatever. Okay, you know, it's 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 all right. Anyway, I just want to say first and foremost, representation. <laughs> representation is everything and i just wanted to share like my little journey is that okay if i share my my journey you know just don't make it too long i'm not gonna make it too long don't, don't make worry. it too long even though i have notes here okay come on okay so uh, i was a kid of the 90s uh i was really happy to see aladdin because uh, my south asians are asians too okay so all my uh indian bangladeshi pakistani uh south asian uh, brothers and sisters so so seeing aladdin was pretty cool and then mulan in 1998 even though i was a teenager that was that was pretty cool um there wasn't a sitcom called all american girl in the 90s with margaret cho i remember that that, that was dope i, I never that. that spoke to my family having that uh uh immigration uh that the immigrant family immigrant experience where your parents uh just talk to you talk about you in their language and they just it, it, that that was that that sitcom i'm just sad it was very short but that that blew my mind um but in terms of movies dude i want to tell you how sparse this is okay so 1993 joy luck club i'm like okay cool i read the book saw the movie and then seven years later the next movie I see, I, I'm not really part of the indie scene. It's just whatever, I'm, I'm mainstream, whatever, you know, comes across me. Right. Um, because uh, I'm of Filipino descent, there was this movie called The Debut, uh, The Debut, and um, it was about, it, it, it didn't hit theaters, but in the community, there was a buzz about it. So I watched it, and it really hit home because uh, it, to see yourself in the big screen. I mean, let, let me put it this way. Don't forget if, to mention Dante Basco. Cause he was, dude, I'm going to say. Oh, Rufio. Yeah. Okay, so Dante Basco. Let me tell you, I didn't see I didn't see a Hook. Okay? You didn't see Hook? I didn't see Hook. I almost want to kick you off the show Okay, now. I didn't see Hook. I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now. I didn't see Hook. So my first time seeing Dante Basco when, when he was in the debut as a hot, like, teen idol kind of guy. Like, I was uh. like, oh, he's so cute. All right, anyway. So, uh... So I just want to put a shout out to uh, Jean Kajayon, the director for that movie. Do make another one. Y you really impacted me, bro. So I don't know if you're. I'll, I'm a. I'm a try to tag you in this. I'll twitch you. I'll. I'll. Uh, what I twitch you. I'll Twitter you. Whatever. But shut up, Father Marvel. Yeah. Um. And then. Um. <laughs> and then after the debut, it was another two years. Better luck tomorrow. And I don't know if y'all seen that movie, but Better Luck Tomorrow Probably was. Not. I have it on uh, DVD. I mean, it, most it, likely not. It was, what it year was did that come out? 2002. And uh, so okay. the dude that played Kang, was his name? Um, Jonathan Majors? No, Kang in a uh, uh, Fast and the Furious movie. Uh, oh, On the um, Low, the debut yeah, is supposedly a prequel because mm -hmm. the guy that directed the debut mm -hmm. also directed one of the Fast and the Furious movies. And that, the de not the debut, excuse me. It's uh, about Han's character. Yeah, Han. Yeah. He's. They're saying that that movie you're speaking of is actually a prequel to Fast and the Furious. Really? Really? Because, because it's they the same guy. Retro, they retroactively yeah. put it in there because Kang, his name is Su Kang. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, Su Kang is his real name. Yeah, yeah his Kang real name. name. Yeah. He played mm -hmm. Han, and he was also in uh, Better Luck Tomorrow. As really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and wow. his name, no, that's, no, that's his name was Han in, mm -hmm. in Better Luck Tomorrow. Dude, I, didn't, oh, even, really I didn't even know that. Yeah. Like, no, that's really, no, that's really interesting. But no, keep, keep going. So, yeah, let's, let's, so Better let's Luck Tomorrow on. came into the like the theaters, right? right? But the movie, I'm sorry. It, eh. You know, like... I was, <laughs> the I ending it. was kind of messed the up. The ending was so... Ah, I was like, ah, come on, guys. Anyway, but I did watch it a few times because I wanted to support it. Anyway, uh, 2003 is when me and Darian... Uh, started dating and that's when I saw Big Trouble in Little China. Let me put that out to you. I considered that an Asian American film because most of the cast was Asian American. All the cast except for two people mm -hmm. were Asian. Were Asian. It was yeah. just what movie Gracie was Law and Jack Burton. It was only that two was white like, people. Nineteen eighty five. Five. Eighty five. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see that until two thousand and three. Right. So whenever Darian watches it, he watches it yearly. I watch it with him. I haven't watched it this year. The, the, watch the lawyer at the okay. beginning for the scene they added wasn't Okay. Yeah. Three people. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying you got Asian people there who don't speak with an accent. It's not like everybody was right. depicted as foreign. But but the so, point you were trying to make is that we didn't get really a lot of homegrown Asian films. We didn't get a lot of films depicting Asian Americans as Asian American, like, like, like not stereotypical <laughs> martial not artists, not foreign, not foreign, like or, or even usually like it's martial foreign. artists or things like yeah. that. Just, be, just being regular people, just being because Americans, like said, Asian yeah. Americans. Because so like, like, yeah. like I said, we got we got Jet Li as uh -huh. that enforcer in Lethal Weapon. What was it three? I think four. it was four. four. Was it four? Four. I thought it was three. First, four was his first movie. Over four here. was his first movie. Okay, three so, was Joe Pesci's movie. Okay. Uh, 
the golden anyway. child it's it's the setting was uh, uh in another Very country no, yeah, yeah, that was, was, in, that was in nepal States. but it was really the golden child well, herself, herself was literally the yeah. only like asian that was kind of well no not the only asian but, okay to keep anyway to keep let me oh go ahead yeah you was but anyway no i was saying uh so we got all of these foreign born stars that were coming over to Hollywood to make movies. Yeah. We weren't getting like Hollywood stars from here yeah. making movies. Like now we've got Americans of Asian descent. Yeah, we got Americans yeah. of Asian descent. Like so we, we were talking about like go ahead. Like, so let me let me just Takeem, I'm very sorry. I did not see I'm a proud casual. I have yet to see Golden Child. I, thought I showed you the Golden Child. I don't remember. Uh, you <laughs> don't remember I, I, you're, you're I want that. the Eddie we're, Murphy. We're watch I that. want the knife. I want the knife. You don't please, please. We gotta watch it again. We gotta watch it. Okay. Again. Yeah. No. That's fine. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> but no. Uh, we're we're running low on time. So okay. Okay. Real quick. Right. Okay. So 2000 uh, 2004 was Harold and Kumar. That was cool. Thank you, uh, Kumar Patel or now Cal Penn and John Cho. That was right. that was awesome. And then there was a. a um, a documentary called The Grace Lee Project I saw. So after 2005, there was nothing on film that came across for me. But YouTube was. A platform that really elevated uh, Americans of Asian descent. We got Happy Slip, Ryan Higa, Kev Jumba, Just Kidding Films. And then music videos I saw. Uh, a rapper, a, a Korean American rapper, his name is um, Dumbfounded. I don't know his real name, but his name is Dumbfounded. He can spit some bars, man. Right. And then that's when I first saw Aquafina. If you want to look her up, there's a song called My Veg by Aquafina. It's no. dope. No. It's dope. Okay? No. Aquafina, dope. Was, Aquafina, in a way, was kind of <laughs> controversial because. Uh, she's been accused of being, you know, of cultural appropriation by black people. Uh, yeah. Just with her, you know, her accent and the way she talked and just because of how she used to rap. Right. Uh, a lot of black people that I saw on Facebook said they refused to see this movie just because she did. Did she not grow up in okay. New York? Okay. I don't know. She Did grew she? up in New York. She's so from New York. I don't quite understand. Don't everybody in New York Dude, talk like that? Black okay. people are very <clears throat> territorial about certain things, man. Like, I, I mean, I'm this shit one hundred percent sounds like she's from New York. Like, yeah, she's New York. She grew up in New York. That's a regional yeah. accent. Why would she not okay. sound like that? Can I, I address know. this real quick? Oh, go ahead. You have something to say? Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I'm just saying that it, black people need to get over that. It's stupid. It, it's like, look, if 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 a white person grows up around nothing but black people, they're going to sound black. If, if there's even such a thing, there's no such thing as sounding black, white, Asian or whatever. You sound like whatever you sound like because you're speaking. It's not just that, yeah. but they're just saying that, you know, she was kind of like she was literally speaking. I, I hear what you're saying. I, okay. I hear no, what you're saying. She's, yeah, she's I hear the English saying. language I'm, with a different dialect. Yeah, yeah. That's it. let me let me address this. I'm going to say this. Just like GQ said. Where you come from is how you speak. If you're from the South, I don't care what your color is, that's your region. You speak from your region, yeah. right? Yeah. But people, this this race, this, this is a social construct. It's like, oh, just because my skin is this, automatically I gotta sound like that. Get out of here. Right. So um I I personally was accused of the same thing. Aquafina, if you're watching this, you know, I'm I'm just letting you know you're not alone, okay? Uh growing up, I I grew up with a, a, a lot of uh minorities. Uh uh like I I grew up with like a lot of Latino people, a lot of black people. Yeah. So whoever Jamaican. I was with literally I you're, spoke you're totally like totally a product of your environment. I, yeah, and and the thing was, so I went from just from my own personal uh, my own personal story I went from like almost an all black school where this is how I talked is yeah, how she went I to talked. High school with me. Yeah, I went to the same high I went to the same high school with Ken. I didn't know him back then. Nope. But yeah, anyway. And so uh so uh and then I transferred over to like an almost all white school. Almost all white, because I was there, I'm not white, so almost all white. And uh huh, huh that's when I Night first day difference, huh? That was the first time I learned what I was expected to sound like, what I was expected to look like. Mm. So I I went in that school talking the way I talk, and um, I think Jimmy O Yang also has this problem. Not problem. Also, this issue. No one gets on Jimmy O Yang for talking like how he talks. Jimmy O Yang sounds like a brother from New York. Okay, he doesn't talk like uh, a Californian. I mean, I think he lives in California now, but he talks like uh, if you just heard his voice, you wouldn't think he's Asian American. Like a lot of people talking to me on the phone, they don't think. First off, my name. Now, since I'm married, uh, you, you can't tell I'm Asian at all until you see me. But anyway, um, but yeah, Aquafina, I like you. I don't care if you sound the way you are. I don't apologize. If people want to put you in a box, whatever. That goes to Rose Tico, too. I'm going to say I'm a, a re Rose Tico. That's the character name. Was it Marie Tron? Yeah, Mar Marie Tron Kelly got a lot of Kelly, Kelly Marie, Marie Tron, Tron got a lot of lot of hate on that. Run off social media. 
Okay, Kelly Marie Tron, I'm going to try to find you and have you watch this, but I want you to know that I love you. Uh, I saw you in uh, The Last Jedi, and my face is similar to yours in that movie, and I've never seen my face on the big screen. So legit, I saw that movie 20 plus yeah. times, okay? All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to try and help, help wrap this thing up because we need to get the power of yours and get people some time, and then I also need to announce the gift. But basically, yeah. in, in, you know, in the last 10 years, we've had an uptick in mm -hmm. homegrown Asian Americans, you know, leading the way with uh, with uh, Kumail Nanjiani uh, being in, in numerous films mm -hmm. after coming over from, you said, Silicon Valley? Yep. Oh, yeah, Silicon Valley. Like Jimmy O. Yang, too. Yeah, yeah. First I used to watch the hell um, out of Silicon so Valley. Like the, so, like, the thing with with Kamel, you know, him mm -hmm. and Issa Rae being in Lovebirds. That was a great movie, by the way. Really? Y'all, you're Which like, y'all Lovebirds. See, I have to watch him, that too. With him and with him and Issa Rae. Casual. Was, I got, I got so many things to watch. I, I haven't seen it yet either, and it's a, it's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Film. Yeah. You had uh, crazy, crazy Rich, Rich, Rich Asians. Asians yeah. Seen with Constance like Wu. Same thing with Hustlers. Yeah. You know, so, and now you got Shang Chi. So, like, know? yeah, like uh, as you were saying. So, I think what happened was. I'm really thankful to YouTube and to platforms like this platform and YouTube and to just prove the marketability of Asian Americans because there was literally nothing. I didn't hear or see nothing until recently. Okay, uh, 2017, The Last Jedi, 2018, Rich Crazy, Crazy Rich Asians, 2019, The Farewell, and then Shang-Chi, and then Raya and the Last Dragon. Uh, that's another Raya Disney. Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah, that, that's right. a really good Disney, Disney movie. That was, you know, these are all Brandy great examples Kim, of how... Kim's Convenience, yeah. uh, freaking uh, Fresh Off the Boat. I mean... Fresh Off the Boat, I, remember, the, I meant dude, to mention man. that. Yeah. I meant to mention the thing that. I got to say about Kim's Convenience is it was way too funny to produce Shang-Chi. Yeah. He was hilarious in that show. Yeah, and I, I need to watch it. John, man, he did that. John, he did that transformation. Like I just didn't like nothing. the last episode. That last episode, kind of. I, I need to watch. I need to watch Kim's Convenience. All right, you so gotta watch it. Really yeah. Anyway, really good show. Thank you, producer, for joining the show. Hey, we hope you enjoyed that clip. Make sure you check out our live content on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash culture junkies. We also have a lot of content available on YouTube, unboxings as well as Blu-ray reviews. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash culturejunkies. And on top of all of that, if you go to culturejunkies.net, you can check out our merch store. The link is culturejunkies.net slash merch. There's a lot of great merchandise there. So there's links and logos and stuff all around me. So check those out and we will see you next time.